Now that those boring intros are over, we can finally get into the real meat of this vlog. Today I'm going to monologue to you about my favorite movie. Uh, now, granted, when I say favorite movie, I mean not part of like a series because it's very obvious that uh, Two Towers with Lord of the Rings, either Sorcerer's Stone or Half-Blood Prince with Harry Potter, definitely part three for Back to the Future, definitely North and South for Austin-esque British lady authors of the time. So. We're just gonna put like series and genres aside and we're just gonna talk about my favorite single installment movie, The Prestige. The Prestige came out in 2006. It is based off a novel of the same name which came out in 1995, which I'm sorry to say at the time of this filming I have not yet read. The movie follows two magicians in late 19th century London, played by Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale, right? as they explore the true nature of magic and go through a deadly competitiveness with time jumps and voiceovers and womp lines. It was directed and adapted by Christopher Nolan and has wonderful supporting actors in Michael Caine, Scarlett Johansson, Piper Barbato, which makes this like a super star-studded cast, right? So why has nobody heard of this? I have a theory, um, although it is pretty weak. In the year 2006, the movie The Illusionist was also released. And though I haven't seen it, I understand it is a period piece about magicians in Vienna exploring the true nature of magic with deadly competitiveness and time jumps and voiceovers and womp lines. Now I would argue that based on the similar storylines and the similar setting and the similar release date that The Illusionist stole some of the prestigious thunder, only no one seems to have heard of The Illusionist either. I don't want to take anything away from these two films, especially considering one of them is my favorite movie. I just wish they had been more widely received. We're gonna move on to the story of how I even saw The Prestige in the first place, because it's actually pretty interesting. So I had a friend growing up that lived in the next town over, and that town was significantly more superior in the way that it had a movie theater. So I would go over to her house after school on Friday nights, and I'd probably like stay the weekend, just whatever girls do, but we would always um, go to the movies, and it felt wonderfully grown up because her father would drop us off before the movie and he'd pick us up after the movie, but in between then, with the theater time, there wasn't an ounce of adult supervision. Being true to myself, we never left the theater to go sneak out with boys and drink the hooch, but I had a great time seeing the movies anyway, because it wasn't always just about the movies that we saw, but just the experience of being in the theater. Uh, and we saw a bunch of movies that autumn, winter of 2005-2006. We saw The Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, Loach, and the Wardrobe. Twice. We saw King Kong, and we purchased the tickets for Flicka. I repeat that half the appeal here was not actually seeing the movie, it was going to the theater, which is the only reason I even agreed to buy the Flicka ticket in the first place. I still to this day don't even really know what Flicka is about, other than of course a horse, uh, cause the friend that I went to see these with was the horse girl. You know, every year has the horse girl. Well, that was her. And I always tended to have a gift for befriending the horse girls, usually because of my aberration for the creature for anything less than very impressive cavalry use. And I think the moods tend to balance each other out. Anyways, we bought the ticket for Flicka, we went into the theater, sat down in the best seats, the ones that are about middle-ish row with the metal bar so you can put your feet up and not be kicking anybody. Best seats. And the previews began. Wonderful previews. I really do love previews. And then the movie began with some sort of sun coming over the horizon, either up or down, there was mountains. I... And unfortunately my memory stopped there because the sound went all burpy and went brrrr and then there was no more sound. The movie kept going but there was no sound accompanying it. And I was already minimally invested in this film, as explained, so I'm outie. And we noticed that in the next theater over, the film had just begun. The previews were, like, midway through. So we hopped over, and that little film just happened to be The Prestige. It's one of those movies that, even though I've seen it probably around 70 times at this point, I'm still, like, gasping at parts. It's the sort of movie that doesn't have to explain every single thing to you because they've underestimated you or because they're patronizing you but because they know you'll follow along and then they just build up question after question after question and don't answer any of them until the last five minutes and then BOOM! Revelation. I highly recommend it. Jacqueline, I'll see you on Thursday.